I stroll into a VHS video rental store. Yeah, one of those things that has these videotapes on the wall. Yeah, like this. That go into machines that look like this. For those of you who, uh, yeah. And I've just realized the um, irony of this situation because uh, of the different angles to it. First of all, I was visiting the capital city of Juno and came coming from a an off the grid cabin. I and I hadn't. Uh, watch TV other than cartoons as a kid and I had seen a few movies when I had visited um, cities but other than that I wouldn't have known what you know I wasn't familiar with the TV or movie scene and so I browsed around but really didn't have much to look at and so I was there for, oh, I don't know, maybe an hour or so. And pretty quiet. Hardly anyone came in. And then I left. Some picked me up and went home. Or went over to um, the, the friend's house that we were staying at. And then the next day or so, uh, Ron said, So, uh, how'd you like my daughter that he just adopted, a teenager? I said, oh, I haven't met her yet. And he said, well, she was the one working the counter at the video store. I said, what? No one told me that. <laughs> oh, her name was Tanny. And uh, she was going to uh, the school that I was about to be going to. And she told me about Jaraz, who was the oceanography teacher at the school whose class I took, and his claim to fame is and was the bubble net feeding method, which is where uh, the uh, blue whales um, go down to the bottom in a circle, blowing bubbles to where the fish don't swim through, and then so they have nowhere to go but up, and then they uh, swim with, up with their mouth open until they, they get a whole, they grab a whole bunch of them at the top. And this is a local behavior that they teach to each other. And there have been many videos now available of this. And, uh, he was featured in National Geographic back in the day that I found him and his family had done this research. And, um... Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. And he taught this class. And we were right on the water. Our high school was. And, um, yeah, we go for labs, we'd go right down and grab samples. And then come back and analyze them. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was great. Fantastic place to take oceanography. And she introduced me to Leanna and uh, a few other young ladies that I, I would call sometimes um, and uh, chat with and so on. In our cabin, we were off the grid, but once a week we would fire up a generator and run our ringer wash machine and charge up um, car batteries and we would use those to power my Commodore 64 computer and um, I don't know what else because we had propane lamps and stove and um, we had a Duracell battery for the radio and um, sometimes we would uh, get videos in town and watch them on the computer monitor and uh, once we even stayed at a friend's house in town, 
that had a video store, so we had, uh, we got to watch videos during that, uh, week or two weeks or whatever it was. Um, so we weren't completely deprived, but, yeah, mostly. You might have a redneck boss if they buy a $300 punch clock in the year 2015 for a staff of three mostly uh, uh, for at least two of them who are on on uh, on a salary I mean they, they work hours that uh, but they really don't punch in and then uh, when I said really uh, you have a uh, you have a really good clock right behind you. It's called a computer. Oh, 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 but you have to put batteries in You have to put batteries in that. Oh, that's so much more expensive than, than, uh,